Their Jesus was much too small. He was tame. He was safe. They were not uncomfortable in his presence. And listen to me, when you declaw the lion of Judah, when you just turn him into this warm and fuzzy household pet, who's to stop you from living however you want? When you no longer see Jesus in his terrifying, soul-exploding holiness, you are always one step away from sin. And so, in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus fixes that. If you've got your Bibles open, look at what it says here. It says that John turned around to see this voice, verse 12, that was speaking to me. And he says, when I turned, I saw him standing among the seven golden lampstands. You know that those seven golden lampstands are the seven churches of Asia Minor. Jesus is among them. He is not off distant, uh, the man upstairs, far removed from his people. Jesus is not an absentee landlord. He is right there in the midst of his churches, in the midst of his people. And it says that he is dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash across his chest. That was the dress of a king the itinerant Jewish rabbi that hung out with fishermen has thrown aside the rags of his human existence and revealed his true identity, almighty, sovereign of the universe. John says this, his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. That white hair is not a sign of aging or frailty. It is a sign of dignity and respect and wisdom. John says his eyes were like blazing fire, piercing through our hypocrisies, piercing through our shams and seeing into our innermost selves. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. The idea Jesus is stable, he is immovable, he does not trip, he does not stumble, he does not falter. He is firm and he stands. He says his voice was like the sound of rushing waters in his right hand. He held seven stars. Listen, when I was was a Buick, you know, when I was a child in the 80s back in children's church, we used to sing this song. Did you sing it? He's got the whole world in his hands. Here Jesus has, he has the equivalent of multiple worlds in his hands. He has an entire planetary system right there in his palm. This Jesus is big. It says that out of his mouth come a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. Listen, this is not the gentle Jesus with children sitting on his lap. This Jesus speaks in Niagara thunder. He blazes with supernova brilliance. This Jesus is so huge that he could play kickball with our planet. He could flick his finger and send our solar system spinning off into space. This is the Jesus of John chapter 1, of Genesis chapter 1, that created the world, that took a handful of syllables, and he just spoke 10,000 galaxies into existence. This Jesus is clothed in splendor and power and majesty and authority. Listen, Annie Dillard. Annie Dillard says this. She says that we Christians don't have any idea what sort of power we so blithely invoke. She says that we are like children playing on the living room floor with our chemistry sets, unaware that we are mixing up a batch of TNT. And she says it is madness for us to wear ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church. She says we ought to walk into the sanctuary with crash helmets on because that's the kind of power we come into the presence of. And that's why John, in our text, he fell on his face as though dead. The same John that had called Jesus' friend, the disciple that he loved, that had reclined on Jesus' breast, all of a sudden now this tidal wave of glory washes over him and smashes him down onto his face, crushing him. He is fighting for his life, his very breath. He is terrified. You cannot casually stand around in the presence of this Jesus. 